Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk about buying an investment property sight unseen in another province. If you live in an expensive area like I do, Vancouver or Toronto, then you may be tempted to look outside of your province to buy in areas where the rental rates to expense ratios look a little bit better, i.e. cash flow. I'm that agent Kelly. I make videos talking about real estate investing uh, out here in Canada. I talk about my local market here in Vancouver and from time to time some mindset and business stuff. If you get any value or entertainment from this video, all I ask is that you thumbs up and subscribe. Let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do when looking to buy in another province is obviously research. You need to find a city that suits your goals and your needs. Every investor is different. For me personally, the reason why I opted into investing out of province is because I wanted to buy something that was cash flow positive. So after all of my expenses every month and the rent, I would be positive a couple hundred bucks. That way I didn't have to pay for anything out of pocket. That was not possible out here in Vancouver. So I started looking elsewhere and I found a city called Windsor, Ontario, where you could literally buy a turnkey property and you'd be cash flow 300, 400 bucks a month. So I basically did all my research online by watching a bunch of YouTubers that cover investing in Canadian real estate. Uh, another really good resource is biggerpockets.com. So that's, I guess I would call it, it's basically like a Facebook for real estate investors. It's mostly investors in the US, but there's a lot of Canadian investors that use it as well. Uh, they've got an amazing podcast you guys should check out, but they also have a form section on their website where I just asked a million questions in there. And uh, that's basically how I stumbled across Windsor Ontario and to this day three years later I bought that property in 2019 I still have not stepped foot in Ontario and I've never even seen that property so any question that you have you can basically search in the forms and see if somebody else has already made a thread about it and just read through the forms or you could literally just post your own question in the forms and people nine times out of ten will answer it uh, it's also a really good resource for connections I got connected with some investors that were already investing in Windsor Ontario asked them a bunch of questions about their investments how they found the city and all that kind of stuff and typically investors that are actively investing in those cities will have a lot of good connections for you to use as well like contractors property managers realtors and stuff like that the second thing you're gonna need is your core four this is a term made up by David Green I believe he's one of the co-owners of bigger pockets he has a whole book on it I also read his book investing in real estate out of state I think it's called or long-distance real estate investing but basically the core four is lender realtor property manager manager and contractor. Typically, you only really need to find two of the four, the property manager and the realtor, and they should have the rest of those resources for you. I would recommend finding a realtor and a property manager that don't already know each other, so their interests will be more aligned with you instead of each other. This way, you'll get an honest opinion of the listings that the realtor is sending you from your property manager, and you'll get an honest opinion of the property manager from your realtor. So just reach out to the realtor and the property manager, explain what you're trying to do and when you want to do it, and they should be able to put all the pieces together for you. Third, assuming now that you've got your pre-approval from a lender, you're going to start looking at properties. What I would suggest doing is every time a listing comes across your plate that your realtor's sending you, that you would seriously consider writing an offer on, send it to your property manager. They're going to tell you what rent you can likely get for that place, and they'll also tell you a little bit about the area. Uh, the reason why I would trust what they're saying, obviously do your research on that property manager beforehand, look at Google reviews, make sure that if it's a referral, the referral's coming from a trusted source, all that stuff, you're gonna vet the property manager. But by sending listings to the property manager, they have a like interest with you. They do not want to manage crappy properties with a bad tenant pool, right? So they want you to buy quality as well because it makes their job easier. You're also going to learn a lot more about the city a lot quicker by doing this as the property manager will explain, hey, yeah, this is a bad area because X, Y, and Z is here. This is a good area because X, Y, and Z. And then you kind of know the areas that you want to be looking in. Then you can refer back to your realtor. Hey, I don't want to look in this area anymore. Property manager said X, Y, Z. Or hey, I want to look in this area. Apparently they've got a SkyTrain coming up and they're doing a renovation on the mall and whatever else, right? 
right? And then of course, after the property manager tells you what rental rates you can get for a property, you know how to run your numbers, right? And I could do a whole video on that, but basically you're gonna take the rental rate minus the mortgage amount, minus the insurance cost. You could literally just call up an insurance company and be like, hey, how much would it cost to insure this place? You're gonna take the property tax. You can literally just Google property taxes in that city, or you can literally just Google what was the last amount of property tax that property owner paid for the year prior to the one we're in right now. You take that number, divide it by 12, add that to your monthly calculation, if this all makes sense. Typically you wanna add in 5% for repairs and maintenance, and maybe two or 3% for vacancy, and of the total monthly rent, and then you're gonna take whatever the property manager is charging you, it's usually eight to 12% of monthly rent. You're gonna take all those expenses, take the rent minus all of that, and that's your monthly cash flow numbers. So rent minus mortgage, property tax divided by 12, property manager, insurance, maintenance, and vacancies. Lastly, you're gonna put an offer on a property assuming it gets accepted and you remove subjects on that property. Your property manager should have a tenant lined up for you by the time you come to close on that property. Uh, they typically charge about, I know in Ontario, I'm pretty sure it's the first month's rent up front. So the least amount of tenant turnover you could have the better so you don't have to keep paying that expense. I've done exactly this now twice with properties that I've never seen. They've both gone amazing for me. The one that I have in Windsor, Ontario, if I were to actually calculate my returns of the money that I put into that property, it's about 688% and Windsor, Ontario is down about 35% right now. So at the top of the market, that return is a lot higher. Should have sold it. My realtor was telling me to sell it. I didn't because 28 and I have a really, really long term horizon. Horizon. I don't really care. I'm just going to hold it for the next 20 years or whatever. My mortgage is like 110 grand on that property. So I'm not too, too worried about it. But as you can see, I mean, it, it's been barely any work. I mean, stuff can go wrong, of course. But the last time I talked to my property manager was back in the middle of the pandemic in 2020. I think I've sent one email to her since and the rent hits my bank every single month. By doing this, you should get a pretty good idea of the property you're buying, the area it's buying it in. Obviously, when you buy a property, you want to get an inspection done to make sure that the house isn't falling apart. So if you enjoyed this video, I put out a lot more content like this. I'm going to be putting out more content like this. I'm that Agent Kelly. Please thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.